For my assignment, I chose to read chapter 2 entitled King of the Road, The Social Construction of the Safety Bicycle from the book of Bicycles, Bake Lights, and Bulbs by W. E. Bishker. When first evaluating the history of the safety bicycle, we must start at the beginning. The first design of a bicycle is thought to have been created around the time of Leonardo da Vinci in 1493. Data suggests that the drawing was done by one of his pupils known as Salai. However, the first version of the safety bicycle wasn't created until the 1880s and 1890s. If all the technical elements needed to modify the first bicycle into the safety bicycle had been available around the time of da Vinci, why did it take more than half a century for gears and a chain drive to appear on the working bicycle? Well, as the chapter suggests, the technical development of the safety bicycle should be viewed as a social process in which relevant social groups were the carriers of that process. In 1817, inventor Carl Drace constructed the running machine that moved forward by pushing on the ground with his feet. Popular simulations of Drace's invention, including the hobby horse or the dandy horse, were produced and sold to be used as sport in England and America. Due to poor design and lack of comfort, the craze was short-lived. The high-wheeled ordinary bicycle, Ariel, was the first lightweight all-metal bicycle. The ordinary bicycle was not meant to provide ordinary road transportation. It was mainly used by young aristocratic men. Due to the design, the ordinary bicycle was very unstable and really hard to get on and off of. This made it almost impossible for women and unathletic men to use the bicycle. The growing popularity of bicycle machines led to quite significant changes in the manufacturing industry. Weapon makers, sewing machine manufacturers, and agricultural machine producers were only too happy to shift their production to bicycles. And learning to ride bicycles became a serious business in the 1870s. The safety problem was pressing for many non-users of the ordinary. Manufacturers began to address these concerns and develop new designs, and they began to regard women and older men as potential bicycle buyers. Some bicycle producers also tried to find solutions for what was called the dress problem by creating different ladies' models of bicycles. Other companies tried modifying the designs of women's clothing and set new standards of fashion. The development of the tricycle promised to solve the safety problem of the high-wheeled ordinary and thereby allowed women and elderly men to engage in cycling. The tricycle even received Queen Victoria's blessing, which made it popular among aristocrats and had become fashionable among the elite. Other attempts to solve the high wheeler safety problem were by modifying the basic scheme of the ordinary bicycle. Revised models included the Extraordinary, the Kangaroo, the American Star Bicycle, Lawson's Bicyclette, the Rover, the Huber, Dwarf, Safety Roadster, and the Whippet. Since these machines posed new problems of their own, the success was not complete and there was room for alternative solutions to the ordinary safety problems. These solutions were largely solved by the design of the safety bicycle in the 1880s and 1890s. The safety bicycle was a low-wheeled vehicle with a diamond-shaped frame and a chain drive on the rear wheel. In partner with the invention of the air tire, the low-wheeling bicycle was gaining a decisive advantage over the high-wheeled ordinary. As the design of the safety bicycle stabilized, so did its use among various social groups. The bicycle became an accepted method of transportation for getting to social and business engagements, in addition to its use for sport, racing, touring, circulating through the parks, and it was also used by the Postal Service and military. Cycling began as a sport and evolved into a means of transport. Bicycling was associated with progress and modern times, and the successful design of the safety bicycle was only possible largely due to the communicative, economic, social, and organizational influencers on the technology's history.